Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it is our favorite time of the week because we're always, as always, as always, we get new knives. Taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, we're starting off today with a couple of smaller knives, uh, the first of which is the latest exclusive version to the Knife Center here of the Spyderco Lil Native. It is our popular combination of a smooth black G10 handle with a crew wear blade. Previously, we've had this uh, available in a satin configuration, but as is typical, what we like to do is then roll out later the black coated version, and here it is. The blade itself is typical Spyderco fashion. You've got this leafy drop point shape with a full flat grind going on. Uh, the crew wear steel is gonna lend this smaller knife blade a pretty significant amount of toughness, uh, especially when you consider it is a folder, which you know, folding knives and toughness don't often go hand in hand. They do sometimes, and they can be rather nice when they do. And you got it right here. Because behind that tougher steel, you've also got Spyderco's compression lock, which is quite sturdy. And as you can see, the lock itself here, as well as all the rest of the hardware, also comes in black to keep things nice and subtle, nice and sleek. Uh, the only bright spots, as we always like to say, are the edge itself and the lettering on the blade. The cool thing about crew wear steel on a smaller knife, such as this one in particular, is even though it is a you know, two and a half blade, two and a half inch blade when you measure it from the tip to the leading edge of the handle there, you can still get all four of your fingers on this handle because of the way Spyderco likes to integrate these finger choils into their designs. So that's great, especially whether you don't want to carry a larger knife or whether due to local uh, rules or whatnot, you might not be able to carry a larger knife, but you don't wanna be giving up a lot of, you know, that feeling of capability. And this definitely, has it. In addition to being tough, that steel holds an edge a good long time too. As for carrying the knife, we've got a deep carry, eh, shouldn't say deep carry. We have a folded over wire pocket clip. There's a bit of handle that does stick up. It is reversible, which is quite nice, even though the compression lock is right hand biased, but it is finger safe too. You've got that fidget friendly flickability to it that also keeps your fingers out of the blade path when you're closing it. You could of course be Actually, I don't even know how to be more surreptitious with a compression lock anymore. I'm so used to just flicking it closed. How would you close it slowly? I guess with the middle finger and slow walk it closed. I had, I had to refigure out how to do it there on the fly, but we got there. It's a cool little knife. Available now, 140 bucks, which is especially great considering the uh, standard S30V version of this is a little bit more expensive. Uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, lock our pricing in on this before the, uh, the latest round of price increases from Spyderco, so it's even a little bit of a deal right now, which is pretty cool. Next up, we have a knife that launched earlier today. The Benchmade Full Immunity is finally here. Three colors, I just had to pull all of them out because they all look good and I'm not dropping them. I'm not dropping them here on camera. You didn't see that. I did. Three very cool colors here. If you watched our uh, SHOT Show coverage of, of Benchmade's new lineup, you know that I especially enjoy this green color over here, but they're all quite good. Uh, Woodland Green is that one. Uh, the blue is Crater Blue, and then we have the Flat Dark Earth right here. All pretty cool. Each one has a little bit of a different vibe, but I'm gonna hold the green one here because I like it. Interestingly, it's kind of fun to see these two knives side by side with the little native we just looked at because overall length is virtually the same, but the feel of something like this full immunity is very different because they, rather than giving you that extra finger space worth of grip with that choil there that Spyderco does with their little native, instead they go with a little more edge on the blade. As such, this is only a three finger knife and as far as fourth uh, pinky finger retention. It does come with a bead and fob here. So you do get a little bit there of extra grip, even if you're not actually gripped on the knife handle itself, which is kind of nice. The handles themselves are aluminum. They've got a good shape to them, a little bit of texture, not super aggressive, but it is there and a little bit of 
contouring to the shape as well. It's not just a slab sided thing. As such, I find it very comfortable actually. In sort of similar uh, philosophy to the crew wear on the Lil Native, we've got M4 blade steel on this Benchmade. Not quite as tough, I don't think, as the, uh, the crew wear. Uh, obviously taking, we're dealing with different companies uh, and different companies heat treats here. But generally speaking, M4, maybe not quite as tough as crew wear, but it should hold an edge a little bit longer. In practical use, they kind of occupy, occupy a very similar niche, I think, at least in terms of how they're, how they're applied here on this size folders. It's a small blade, you've got good toughness and you've got good edge retention to back it up as well. Not stainless, M4 should be uh, probably less stainless than crew wear, which neither of them are truly stainless, but anyway. Very cool, and it's cool on this kind of utility blade shape that we get on the full immunity too. You've got, I always say that because it looks kind of like you know, a hexagonal utility blade, you know, big box cutter, so to speak. But you've got that power and precision of that type of blade shape in something like this. We've got a full flat grind, blade length itself just under two and a half inches, so it meets kind of that same uh, threshold if that is your cutoff in terms of what you can carry or would like to carry. Really nice fit. Deep carry pocket clip, it is reversible for either side. And unlike the compression lock, the axis lock on the Benchmade is completely ambidextrous. So either hand will work just great. It's finger safe, it's flickable, it's more deliberately usable if you'd like. You've got thumb studs to open with either hand, you know, dual thumb studs there, so that works great for just about everyone. Check them out now, uh, they're on the site. Uh, price on these is a bit more expensive than the little native, I'll grant you. These are about 270 bucks right now. Next up, we have got the T3500 from Riot and Tashi Baruka. Uh, $357 for this knife. It is a Riot made knife, however, so for that price, you are getting world-class attention to detail, fit and finish, and construction. The blade length is three and a half inches long, M390 steel, really sweet recurved clip point shape, that straight clip point spine right there. Aluminum, or aluminum, titanium handles rather, with on this one, I think a really cool jigged front panel there. It is actually what's interesting to me that I should have noticed this before, it almost looks like they are inlays. Should I check our site? Should I, well. should I actually right read? <laughs> they are brass inlays. Wow. Okay. I uh, I should have been aware of that. Apologies for only discovering it here as we're uh, talking about it. So yeah, those are patinaed and tumbled brass inlays with that jigging pattern on it. It's pretty cool. There are several uh, different versions of this T3500 we have in stock right now too, each with some uh, different treatments going on. You can check them all out at the link, of course. As for the back, it is a closed back design. So rather than standoffs, the two halves meet right there in the middle, gives us that hidden lanyard point integrated into the handle construction itself. It feels, despite having a kind of angular look, pretty comfortable in fact. Not a, you know, something that's gonna be like an hours long wood carving type of knife, but there's nothing here that's kind of poking out and, and making me feel like it's any less comfortable than any other, you know, well comforted folder, shall we say. We've got a frame lock, we've got ball bearings in the pivot, really nice profile in that closed position right there, very thoughtfully designed and really great action to go along with it. And the other cool thing, which is, this is just a cool thing, you've got the flipper tab sticking out here, but the blade itself isn't coming this way when it's closed. It's this line of that tab is kind of following the edge of the blade. Check it out when it's open, you don't have, or what feels like a flipper tab sticking out since the edge kind of starts right in front of it. Cool look, very cool. All right, next up we have Another crossbar locking knife. This is the Tactile Knife Company Maverick, a Richard Rogers design. Uh, we had a, a batch of these come in previously, both this titanium version and the uh, Rich Light version. They went rather quickly. Uh, so we are filming this, of course, earlier in the week. We don't film these Thursday morning and, and post them Thursday night. I don't want to. So while we do have them in stock right now, as we are filming this, no guarantees uh, on this batch by the time Thursday rolls around, but availability of these should be getting a little more frequent. So hopefully we'll be able to get them more, uh, 
more frequently from Tactile as time is progressing here. Uh, $350 for this machined titanium version. It is made in the USA. We have a three and a half inch magna cut blade in just a very useful and very versatile drop point shape. The grind is a high flat. It is a very, or a relatively thin blade stock as well. So this is not a, you know, heavy beater tank style of a knife. This is a knife blade that remembers what a knife blade is supposed to be. And that is something that cuts, something that slices efficiently. Nothing against the, uh, the sharpened pry bars of the world, but there's, you know, different sides of the spectrum, of course. And this one falls on the slicier, more efficient side of things rather than the big tanky side of things. But despite that being the case, the handle itself certainly has a feeling of very, uh, very strong. The handle has a strong feel to it. It feels very secure, very stable. The titanium, we've got their signature milled lines going on with some contour to the shape as well. So it nestles into the hand quite nicely and yet has a super solid feel, as mentioned, I hope already. The liners underneath are actually full length. So you've got that backing up the crossbar lock rather than just like some small pieces where some other designs out there can default to that at times. Blue accents on the pivot, brighter blue accents on the backspacer. Pocket clip has these standoffs and is a single piece there. Non-reversible, unfortunately. I say unfortunately, because again, with the crossbar lock and dual thumb studs, everything else would be completely ambidextrous. So I kind of wish they had done that too, but it does keep the front side a bit cleaner. So, you know, there's always, obviously always a trade-off there. As far as the action goes, you can see I, I missed a couple of flips there a second ago, but it is quite smooth. The action is running on washers, so more resistant to uh, dirt than dirt and dust, etc., than a bearing base pivot might be, and it's going to smooth out quite nicely. Check these out uh, while they're in stock, and if they're not, we will be getting more, so keep an eye out, of course. Next, we have a new Okaso knife, and between the last time we showed an Okaso knife and this time where we're showing an Okaso knife, I've learned more about the people behind the company. This was actually started by some former Cold Steel employees when Cold Steel got acquired uh, by GSM a couple of years ago. This is kind of the, uh, you know, one of the, the spinoffs we've gotten as a result from some of the creative minds uh, from Cold Steel. Uh, that previous knife was an Andrew Demko design. This knife right here is a Mike Wallace design and it's called the Strategy. The interesting thing that happened to me here with this knife is on paper or you know, on screen, so to speak, on paper, um, it looked fine, but it, uh, it looked like you know another knife. Cool, let's check it out. In hand, it's feeling like something more to me than, than the impression I initially got off of the paper. The, I said it again. You just got paper on the brain. Paper on the brain. I really like the proportions of this knife, the lines, the size, the feel, the way it presents in the hand is just really thoughtfully done. Like it doesn't jump off the screen, but in hand, everything about this makes so much sense. Uh, price on it is 150 bucks, 149.99. Forgive me for rounding. Uh, we've got a three and a half inch blade of K110 steel, which is uh, Bowler's highly precisely made version of D2. So it's basically think of it as really good D2. Nice clip point profile going on. And kind of like the, uh, the tactile we just looked at, we have a relatively thin blade, although it's a little bit thicker here with a higher flat grind, just a great kind of all around thing that leans a little more on the slicey side, but actually this one feels like a little more, little more beefy. Yeah, it, it is a little thicker than the tactile, but it's, it's a great feeling middle ground. The handles are G10 and the feel for me is great. The finger grooves hit really nicely for me, uh, but even if they're not perfect for you, they're pretty gentle. So it's not going to be something that kind of ruins your grip if you don't quite fit. Liner lock, uh, if I hadn't mentioned it already, and some nice details here, the pivot and the pocket clip here. This is a reversible deep carry pocket clip, but it mounts from the opposite side that the clip actually sits on, which is a pretty neat way to go about it, especially when you incorporate the branding there. And this in a way that still feels kind of classy and subtle to me. 
And then speaking of branding, check out that pivot. All of the, uh, the letters in Ocaso actually show up in that diamond shaped pivot too. Very, very cool. Let's check out the action here. We are running on ball bearings. Nice and crisp. These are made in Taiwan. And actually, I believe some of the same factories that some of the old cold steel stuff, and still current cold steel stuff, has been made. Yeah, pretty compelling thing in the hand. Like I said, everything about it feels great. The proportions are great. And the construction, nothing to worry about at all. All right, next, people have been waiting for this one. The Tops El Pionero is now here. Here it is. Uh, it is basically a modified tactical paring knife is kind of the best way to think about this. Uh, it was designed by a guy named Ed Calderon, who has a lot of experience uh, and a, a long career of you know, working against the Mexican drug cartels. And this is based on a knife he modified for you know concealed use in said scenario. Uh, price on it's going to be, I believe, about 175. I actually don't have our final pricing here in front of me. We've got a 1095 blade, a little bit over three inches long, wickedly sharp. I mean, it's just an excellent grind going on. But the big story, like the headline about this knife, is not really the blade, cool as it is. It's the handles here. You have micarta, and you've got this very distinctive notch on the spine side towards the tail of the knife. And that's there to help you know where the edge is. What I mean by that is that feel of that notch allows you to index this knife. And especially if it's coming from a concealed position when adrenaline might be high, no matter how you're holding this handle, either reversed or forward, you can always tell where that notch is. And because of that, without even looking at the knife, you can always tell where the edge is as well. Very important when seconds count, of course. Even beyond the kind of concealed tactical usage, which I should say the sheath backs up that assertion very nicely. It is Kydex, and it's got this very nice clip here that's gonna work great uh, inside the waistband or even in a pocket maybe if you wish, but you have a lot of handles sticking out. But besides the you know concealed tactical nature of it, it's just a cool little companion knife. If I didn't have you know knives I designed for this purpose, this might be something I would carry as my backup knife to my larger knife when camping, especially because I like camp knives that do a bit of food prep as well. And you've got a small bird and trout slash pairing knife style of thing here. Way more than just a tactical knife. Of course, it's built super well because it's a tops. You've got a nice feeling in the hand if you were going to like start carve wood with it, that sort of thing. Again, most of us aren't tactical people. I know I'm certainly not. Me neither. But you've got more to it, more, more appeal beyond just the tactical uses here, I think. I think it's a really sweet little knife. All right, next we have a Smith & Sons folder. The mud bug is back. Uh, new versions of this uh, with some burlap micarta handles, three different colors. This is the forest green, have now hit our site. And they're very cool. It is a lockback sod buster is the way to think about it. So it's the sod buster has always been like the, you know, relatively affordable, everyday, hardworking peasant knife of the slip joint world. And they've added the stability of a lockback to that to help maintain that character with more security going on. It's not a super affordable knife. This is a uh, assembled in USA knife coming in about 185. Uh, previous versions, I can't remember if it's previous versions of the Mudbug or just other folders they've done have actually been built by Mazarin in Italy. So perhaps uh, some of the parts may have been coming from there, uh, but all of these are put together here in the US. The blade itself is just over three and a half inches, D2 steel, full flat grind with a stone washed finish. I mean, does it get much more you know, hard working than that combo right there? Finish to steel, everything, very nice. The handles offer a full grip, even if you have slightly larger than average hands like myself, no problems there whatsoever. The lockup has a nice snap when you close it, has a nice sound when it locks as you open it too. Let's see, it is a two hand opening knife. You've got the thumb stud or the, uh, the nail nick there. You could probably put a, uh, a quick stud there if you wanted to uh, offer, or if you wanted to add some one hand open ability Looks like there should be enough room and it should be at a, a decent enough angle that it would work. 
uh, but I cannot confirm that. I'm, I'm conjecturing here at the moment. Really solid feeling thing. Uh, a couple other colors, like I mentioned, there's a, uh, a brown burlap or almost kind of like a, a natural tan and a, uh, and a tobacco brown burlap. Yeah, two, two different natural tones and the forest green right here. Next up, we have the Tor Scalawag Tactical Limited Edition Fathom Fixed Blade. Here it is. And this thing is a beast. Blade thickness there, let's start with that. Uh, about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, man. Reverse tan tone. Oh, I hate you so much right now. No, this is very much not a reverse tan. It's like not even close, actually. Agree or disagree. We have a, you could call that one. And I will. This is very, very much more sheep's footy. This thing is built like a tank. D2 steel, quarter inch thick. This is the kind of knife to me that says, like, you know those tasks that you shouldn't use a knife for, but you wind up probably wanting or having to use your knife for anyway? This is the knife that you want to use for that sort of thing. This is just a sharp wedge of sheep's foot shaped steel that feels like it could conquer just about any bit of abuse you could think of. I mean, it's, it's a tank. It's gonna do all that stuff. Uh, green G10 handles on this one, few different colors, few different blade finishes right now. What's the, uh, the length on that blade? Six and a half inches long. It could pierce, it could smash, it could hammer. You could actually hammer with the back end of the exposed tang right there. That's, that's it, that's it, that's what it does. <laughs> it's gonna do it very well. We have a Kydex sheath also, there it is. Uh, no belt attachment hardware, but a large uh, standard size tech clock will work on this just fine. Heavy duty work knife. Reverse hand. No, heavy duty work knife, end of story. Moving on, very cool, I like it. It's not a reverse tanto. Uh, next up we have a new low tar knife. This is the Chaos Matsor. It is kind of a hybrid tanto. Although if you hold it upside down, it's a reverse tanto and it does have, yes, it, it does have a sharpened edge on the spine and serrations on the spine. It's an inverted reverse tanto. It is an inverted to reverse tanto. Fine, whatever, I'll let you have it. Uh, 399 for this knife, G10 handles finger ring, whether you, you are using this knife in a forward grip position, in which case the rear guard works as a great rest for your thumb, so it's clearly intended to be used that way, as well as your standard quote unquote karambit style grip, in which case that same ramp, at least for me, hugs the, uh, my, the heel of my palm. What's that? That part of your palm. The non-thumb end. The non-thumb non end of my above wrist hand part biologist way in please but it hugs that part quite nicely the edges are all done nicely and when i say edges here i'm talking about the handle we've got edges that are rounded over so it's not going to bite you in any unnecessarily way they keep all the bitey bits on the opposite side of those dual guards right there the steel is cpm d2 which i must mention because folks uh, often confuse the two it is not your standard d2 the powder metallurgy process grants the, uh, this, this alloy, a much higher degree of toughness. And thank you to the folks who took me to task in our last FAQ when I said orders of magnitude more toughness. An order of magnitude does have a science or an actual mathematical percentage, a mathematical amount, and this is not an order, not an order of magnitude tougher than your standard D2. It is just significantly tougher than your standard D2. So much less prone to chipping and that sort of thing. So thank you, my magnitudinal people out there. The sheath here is pretty cool. It is Kydex and it comes with a J style hook here at the back for easy access when you want to take it off of your belt, but retention when you don't want it to come off of your belt. And it has the ability to work in a standard up and down position or a horizontal position by simply loosening the two screws here you can pivot that hook so that it comes or that it carries horizontally tighten it back down you're good to go and then of course if you want to swap that out for your carry method of choice be it a tech lock or something else with the holes and slots you've got a lot of versatility there pretty much anything should work quite nicely 
Next up, we have a knife that could be referred to as a reverse Tonto. So we will. I will not. So <laughs> new versions of the SOCOM Alpha Mini from Microtech, and they call it the Warcom because they are referring this, as they should, more as a modified Warncliffe blade. Take that. I'm gonna have to have words with Tony. You, you go, you do that. Godspeed. Wish me luck. $285 for this knife, three and three quarters of an inch on the blade length, and it is M390 in this case, with a, a, nice, a nice looking stonewashed finish. Uh, partial serrated or fully serrated, we have in stock right now. Again, at least while we are filming this knife, filming this video of this knife. I guess nice. filming this knife technically works. Right so we'll, now, that is the verb, filming knife. <laughs> this is the knife, we're filming it. Yes. So there you go. <laughs> What's really cool to me about this knife actually is it, it changes the utility or the utility case or use case, at least in my mind, to the, uh, the standard versions like the drop point or Tonto versions of these. This is a more kind of utility focused style of blade. You could still certainly do, you know, put this into tactical roles. The tip is still acute enough and presents at the right angle. You could use it for that sort of thing. But I like the idea of using this as more of a just heavy duty utility blade. G10 handles, nice shape to it. Works in several different grips quite nicely. You've got a bit of style, but you've got enough neutrality that even large hands hanging off the back shouldn't have a problem using the blade. And traction shouldn't be a problem either because you've got these broad, I don't even want to call them jimping, but these broad milled sections that create some ridges to give you some extra surface area for grip, which is pretty nice. And it's always cool to just look at a fixed blade from Microtech too, because you know, usually we're looking at an OTF from Microtech. Kydex style of sheath, you could see the click there was quite nice. Comes with a tech lock style attachment. Same hole pattern, slightly different uh, release method here. This is not a dots uh, clip either, but it is, I don't see any branding on it, but it's the same type of thing. Works great. I like the uh, nod to their custom hardware here on the screw heads for that uh, nod uh, tech lock clip, uh, but it's got that signature Microtech thing. Head, head pattern, head. Oh, sorry, Tony. No, no worries. <laughs> Lots to talk to him about. You'll have lots to talk to Tony about next time. Really cool. Check him out. Speaking of an OTF, uh, not a Microtech at this point, although we do have a ton of Microtech OTFs that come into stock. Uh, pretty regular, on a pretty regular basis, we get all kinds of new finishes on most of their models that sometimes it's hard for me to even realize what's new and what isn't, but you can check them out at the site. Uh, but we do have a new OTF here, the Guardian Tactical GTX 25, 250 bucks for this knife. It is a two and three quarter inch bladed OTF with an LMAX steel hollow ground and a black stone washed finish on this particular one, but we have a couple of different options right now. Aluminum handles, as you would expect, single screwed pocket clip here. It is only only works on the right side. Again, I kind of wish they would have done uh, reversibility there because otherwise with the spine mounted switch here, everything's perfectly usable, perfectly symmetrical otherwise for left hand use. If you're not left handed, I know that's not gonna bother you though, so don't let it hold, hold, it, hold it against them if you are a righty. I like Guardian Tactical's switch design, I always have. It is an asymmetrical thing with this concave section for when you're pushing it out and a convex section when you're pulling back. And both work very well and very comfortably and actuate that excellent action. I mean, you can hear how good that is. At least I can talk good. Anyway. Some speed holes in the blade actually make it go faster, don't you know? We also have a ball bearing at embedded in the handles there at the tail end for some striking glass breaking potentially if you need that on your small sized OTF. Very cool little thing. A couple more autos to talk about. We've got some new Protex, including this very striking Godfather coming in about 300 bucks. Aluminum handles, the button is abalone, so you've got that inlay and this sapphire blue 154 CM blade, four inches long. It's just 
freaking neat, you guys. This is this is one of those that that's the best way I can talk about it. The Godfather and Godson, which is the smaller version of this knife, I always like to talk about as sort of a, you know, style, not stylized is not the wrong word, a kind of minimized, refined, angular take on the classic stiletto form factor. If you want a more classic stiletto stylized thing, check out their Don model. But the Godfather and Godson are more like a minimalist take on that form factor, and it works really well. We've got plenty of real estate for using this knife. The profile's long, tapering, very acute for piercing tasks, but certainly enough utility here for your more mundane day-to-day -day stuff. Roughly a mid-height flat grind, full aggressive swedge that actually makes for a very efficient profile when you're moving through materials, especially on a curve. Price on this, if I hadn't mentioned, 300 bucks. Uh, we also have a new version, a few new versions actually, but I only have one on the table, of the ATCF Auto, a Bob Trizola design from ProTech. Uh, 480 bucks for this one. Three and a half inch blade with Magna Cut blade steel. Is this the, no, this is the second Magna Cut blade we've had on the table today. Magna Cut, I didn't talk about it earlier, but not only is it stainless and have, not only does it possess stainless qualities and high edge retention, it is also quite tough for a stainless. So hard for any steel to pull off high marks in all three and Magna Cut is like the one that does it quite well. I think similarly to my feelings about the El Pionero we looked at earlier, this blade right here is another great option for something that's clearly tactical. I mean, it's a Bob Terzola tactical knife originally, but a very useful thing for far more than just your tactical uses. You've got a mid-height flat grind with a swedge, versatile drop point shape. It's going to do all your EDC stuff and beyond quite nicely. The handles here are blackened aluminum with dark matter fat carbon inlays on both sides. Here you can see the milled clip from the backside. No uh, screws visible from the out. It is secured from the inside. So that keeps things nice and clean there, which is pretty cool. Uh, and the firing button also looks like, uh, like abalone. We don't have, actually have it listed, but Actually, it might be Mother of Pearl. I can't tell for sure, actually. And our site doesn't say for sure, but it looked good. It's it, shiny. It's shiny. I haven't talked about the signature Protec sound yet. Want to hear yeah, it? you will. Want to hear it? That sounds like a Protec. It sounds great. The action is great. The feel of these knives are very cool. And it's cool to see them continue to do cool new versions of this cool design. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Cool. Next up, we got some best techs to close out the video. Uh, the first is a new Ostop Hell design. This is the Bihai Front Flipper. 63 bucks for this. You got a 14C 28N Hawkbill blade, just over two inches long. We've got a liner lock folded up. You have no idea you've got such a crazy or aggressive looking blade shape inside. But when you're ready to go, in addition to it says a front flipper, but it's not really. It's more of that top flipper thing so that it works well with your thumb or your index finger if you prefer. And then there you have it. Several different colors of this. I really like the black with the red backspacer and the two-tone blade, but there are, like I said, several. We have a single position pocket clip, non-deep carry over here, ball bearings in the pivot, inset liner lock. Everything's done really, really nicely, especially for the price and just kind of the hooked nature of this. To me, it wouldn't be something I would necessarily tackle, you know, scores of cardboard with, but that is something that recurve blades can tend to work well on. Anything that's going to work well, or that's gonna give you an advantage when it gathers the material into the cutting edge as you're pulling through will work nicely. Where I think in your just average daily life, a hawkbill blade of this size would come in especially useful. All that, stupid, crazy, tank-like plastic stuff that they wrap everything in where you can't, like even scissors have a hard time with. This is gonna work really nicely there, whereas if you had a belly sweeping away, it can be a little easier for that to just kind of slip out of that thing, because it's a slippery thing to cut. The hooked nature of this is gonna be super nice for stuff like that. And if you can wrap your head around that and, and the feeling of that in your head, I think you'll quickly see other areas where that could come in quite useful. 
Next we have uh, actually two best tech mans or best tech mans. Uh, and I'm gonna go out of order here because the Dundee on the table at the end is actually another Ostop Hill design. Uh, this is coming in about 45 bucks. You've got D2 steel, three and three, 3.35 inches long, straight, long straight clip point with a swedge and a high flat grind. Again, great for all kinds of daily stuff. It's just a nice pocket knife blade sized up a little bit. Very cool. G10 for the handles, inset nearly deep carry clip with flush screw head. So very accommodating when you're taking it uh, out of your pocket and more especially putting it back in. We've got an inset liner, a lot of, you know, inset liner lock at this price is quite nice. Deep carry, or not deep carry, ball bearings in the pivot. Nice flipping action with the flipper tab. I haven't tried this yet, but we do have a fuller here, which will allow you to pinch it open. Probably, yeah, I can do it with uh, with the thumb and fourth or a thumb and middle finger there. I'm probably not going to be able to middle finger flick it because it's the access is really narrow and the detent is quite strong. Yeah, no, that's that's not happening. Someone out there might be able to do it, but my fingers are a bit too big for that sort of thing. I'll just do that and enjoy it. Solid little knife and good price, several different colors. Check those out. Next up, we have uh, two new fancy ver fancier versions of the Ronin folder from Best Tech in the under the Best Tech Min line. Uh, the other is an olive wood, so you've got a lighter color as well as this, which is rosewood. So you've got that little bit of a reddish tint in this one, much more a more warm. Eh, they're both pretty warm, but you know what I mean. Each one, of course, is gonna be a little different because it is a natural material. You can actually see the difference from one side to the next on this one. Reversible deep carry pocket clip on this knife, or sorry, non-reversible deep carry pocket clip on this knife. Everything else, however, is amb ambidextrous in terms of the controls because we have a crossbar lock. The tension on the lock is a little bit higher than some out there, but it feels really, really secure indeed dual thumb studs, really cool kind of broad elliptical drop point shape with a very acute tip, Damascus steel. And we actually, I don't have the composition of the Damascus, but you can see from the top here that we do have a core steel going on. And at this price point in country of origin here, probably, if I were to venture a guess, I'd say it's probably a VG10 core uh, stainless Damascus right here, but it looks very good. Uh, if we can get confirmation of that, we'll have a thing right up here saying ding or something to that effect. We'll see how that goes. The handle feels very excellent. It's a little bit thicker and a bit rounded over. So it has a hand filling grip rather than like a narrow uh, flat profile. Each of course has their uh, pluses and minuses, but the comfort level here is quite nice. Love the blade shape. It's got all the uh, drop point versatility, but a little bit of flair to the profile and then of course the Damascus just ups that a little bit more. The action's great. The lockup is very solid. We've got ball bearings in this pivot, no washers. Super, super nice. Check them out. And if you don't want the uh, Damascus versions, the uh, standard versions of this knife uh, come in like just over 50 bucks. I'm talking like $52 or so with Sandvix 14C 28N. The same stuff as on this guy right here which is a very tough stainless steel that holds a very nice fine edge too. That's it. That's all I've got for you this week. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and to get your hands on any of these knife, knives, <laughs> click the links in the description to take you to knifecenter.com. While you're there, don't forget about our Knife Rewards program because if you're buying one of these knives today, it'd be real nice to earn some free money to spend on your next one. So that's what you get with our Knife Rewards program. <laughs> I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.